Hey everybody and welcome to another RCT2 review. Today we're continuing our series going through the head-to-head -head 10 parks. This is park number two of round one and match number two. The Evergreen Gardeners is the team. Uh, Troubadours at Baladins is the park name with 70% uh, share to Babar Tepe, 20% to 98 and 5% each to Lewis and Lurker. So a nice four player build on this one. A uh, very medieval looking map as we jump into it right here. I figure why don't we start here at the bottom and we'll kind of work our way up to the castle. Great music there to accompany us as well. Uh, pretty much every park so far has had some kind of a custom score, which I think is really the, kind of the new almost requirement for head-to-head -head parks going forward to really continue to have the uh, level of uh, detail just as high as you can possibly get it. We have another maze here like we had in the Extraordinary Biota Park. Uh, love the uh, kind of hidden maze uh, or invisible actual maze and then using the scenery to make it itself. Uh, this park kind of reminds me of a head-to-head -head park from a few years ago. I think it was called Forum Celeste, uh, but it was a Roman park and had a similar idea to this with uh, like mechanisms for these various rides, like all the gears and stuff uh, for this swing ride, which I think is pretty cool. Love the cables hanging down for when it parks. And then also just the synchronized spinning of these uh, kind of wind looking blades here. Same with the gears and the cogs for the Ferris wheel as well. I think that's kind of a fun little touch. Uh, this is a cool tower. Uh, I love the, the various pieces of wood here kind of stuck to the side. So it looks very kind of haphazardly put together. Uh, that's pretty cool uh, detail right there. Uh, over here on the other side, we've got a stables and uh, a couple of these little cars that are driving all around or I guess horse drawn carriages. Uh, this is kind of neat. This uh, looks like a big keg of, of beer, I would assume, or a big mug of beer. That's uh, a fun little detail, almost kind of like a medieval version of the um, RCT uh, stalls, perhaps. So a couple different things here. We've got this uh, big swing ride here with uh, the uh, is hanging down from the the bell tower of the church an odd little little one there but uh same with this drop tower here on the back side as well um i would start and say these names but they're all in french and i'm sure i would do a terrible job of pronouncing them so you're gonna have to read into here we have a little uh, uh kind of courtyard i suppose with a trebuchet and a, a couple of uh, other nice uh four instruments here and I guess this takes us to our first coaster. So this is a uh, fairly sizable RMC looking coaster. Um, so this is the uh, uh, Montjoy Saint-Denis, uh, which I guess I'm probably still pronouncing incorrectly, but let's take a ride on this one because it's kind of an interesting layout squeezed in here. We got this uh, pretty sizable launch up this fairly sizable hill as well. And then a layout that, um, well, it's entirely too fast, but uh, I'm, um, I'm guessing it was probably intended that way. Uh, there's a couple of sections that go way, way, way too quick uh, for the ride, which is a bit of a shame because the layout is actually really nice. Uh, I do like how they're using the new pieces uh, with the diagonal climbs and, and all that. Uh, these low to the ground rolls and everything. It does feel very RMC-esque as far as the layout goes. So very nice detail uh, when within that. Uh, so good uh, coaster all around and some custom supports. Got some nice custom supports going on here. Love the uh, supports on the zero, or I think the dive loop coming through here as well. Uh, on the outskirts, we've got a couple of little scenes here. This guy is having a rough day, it looks like. And uh, a little fire here with this small cabin on the outskirts. Uh, love this waterfall coming down uh, around this other little coaster thing that we'll get to in a little bit, uh, too, with the arches and everything and uh, more frozen staff that uh, tell us a little bit of a story so here's the quarry worker and uh, this is actually really kind of a neat touch as well you can see the the rock work here throughout and that's very regular here so it's definitely this quarry that they've been excavating out and the coaster comes and integrates through this is a fun frozen staff remember this hanging this guy hanging right here uh, or i guess kind of flop down having a break perhaps kind of a neat touch this round tower here uh, this kind of architecture I always enjoy, just the kind of half timbering type 
structures, the overhangs, which are always a little bit hard to do in this game, I think. Uh, this building accomplishes it pretty well, I think, with the uh, uh, hanging uh, sections here where these kind of dormers on top stick out. And I do like the archway underneath that's effectively kind of the main path here uh, that people can pass underneath. I like that whole vibe. Also using some of the shop rides here, so we get the markets at different angles uh, throughout the space. It's amazing how versatile these objects are. Uh, just really, really useful throughout. Cool windmill. Um, again, using the blades here that I think Kinos uh, built uh, for... Uh, Kinos. Uh, swing ride on the bottom of it. Uh, so this is a pretty big windmill here, but uh, using the swing ride is kind of a fun little detail there. And this uh, balloon going up to the top of the tower here, I guess acting as a little bit of an elevator, takes us to this other little coaster. So we've got uh, this one here, which I'm not even going to try and pronounce, but uh, it's kind of a neat little rickety looking structure here, a diff couple different colors uh, throughout between the dark brown and the light brown. So let's have a ride on this thing. little hills and flat corners. It doesn't do terribly much, but I like the structure. Structure in general is kind of what makes this one for me in general. Uh, it fits on a pretty narrow space, really just two tiles across for the most part. Pretty okay. Nice little filler ride in there. And it uh, sets us up for a really nice view of these archways up to the castle. Absolutely love this arch bridge. I think it looks incredible, uh, especially with the edge detailing here, a little bit of moss on the rocks and everything. Uh, really, really nicely done, but we'll we'll get to that as we get a little further up on the thing. So down here, we've also got a jousting arena with the horses coming across and our seating all the way through. That's always kind of fun. I know we've seen the jousting arenas done many, many times in this game, but it's always kind of fun to see come through. I wonder if there's a little bit of a uh, hacking hiccup there with them slowing down, but I do love the detail of this. If you go to this angle, and you can really see the... Uh, wheel marks of the some kind of uh, wheeled vehicle coming through here and kind of the way that it's a bit overgrown and everything love the two different opposing team tents blue and the red just really nicely laid out all along and all those market stalls underneath as well cool audio to accompany it but here's a fun one this uh Click on it. These uh, little mine carts that go all the way down to the bottom, and uh, they also end up coming back up to the top, sort of magically, as far as this goes. But let's follow this one down because it's kind of a neat little uh, ride. I'm not entirely sure what it's meant to be, besides just a kind of a cool little mine cart ride uh, using the single rail track, which is kind of an interesting choice. But it does allow for the track pieces that you don't really have on many other ones. Um, here, actually, as we're passing it, we have the procession here, uh, which uh, says if you open up, the king is dead, along with the king. Uh, so, hopefully the king's had a bad day. Uh, but he uh, actually goes on a tour with his little procession here. There's horses and uh, and people walking with it, and this carriage throughout. And uh, if you actually watched the, the map and he downloaded the the king goes, or the king's body, I guess, goes the whole way down this thing, all the way down the hill, into the town, all the way around the town, and then back up. So kind of a neat um, uh, just procession and kind of a fun little detail to have as well. I do really like this um, restaurant here with uh, little tables outside and all the different uh, things. It looks like he maybe had a little bit much to drink King Arthur here. Got quest going on with the uh, little pop-up bubble. So that's kind of a fun little detail um, with that. And actually, this is a really good use of the cobwebs. Uh, just to add a little bit of detail to the whole thing. Continue our way up, and we've got a couple of these little uh, huts and different things, more uh, castle archways and gates and stuff. Um, small little round right here with the tents, or the horses and everything. I, I do really like the use of all the flags for movement throughout the whole thing. Work our way climbing up. Uh, again, to note the spiral stairs here, uh, these are actually really well integrated into the rock hard to kind of tell where all the various parts in the map kind of start and stop, but done this way. Uh, those sit in the whole thing. 
So lots of little signage and just kind of general rough detailing. I feel like this sort of uh, these uh, ruts in the road and all this is kind of what we come to expect from a lot of things these days uh, in head-to-head -head parks. But uh, just very cool in general. So here is the um, little burnt-out cottage, and we open up this uh, this knight who's standing here that says, "If I find that dragon." So clearly the uh, the dragon's done a little bit of a number on the cottage here. Uh, so that's kind of a fun detail as well, especially with the smoldering little bits and pieces. And we continue on to the bridge. So uh, talked earlier about the structure of it. I actually kind of like how it's not flat. We've got this great angle up through the thing, so it kind of grows as it comes along and really helps with the overall park view. So it kind of draws your eye up to the castle itself. It's a very kind of brown map, so you have to look at the architecture to really kind of guide you. And the pathway itself, you know, when you look at this, it's a very kind of mingled, um, a dense town. And then you have this very serpentine path that goes all the way up to the castle itself. I do kind of like. Here's the castle. It's, uh, you know, relatively understated, perhaps compared to a lot of the village below. It's not huge, but that's also probably a space requirement thing just from the size of the map that you've got to work with but uh, where the king originates his uh, little tour of I guess his playing his body but you get his nice little pile of gold here and a lot of frozen staff looking out and about named after some of the uh, team members and around to the other side here we've got some uh, sheep in a pasture I don't know what the sheep object is that's one um, and some uh, Guys who look like they maybe are up to no good here tunneling into the castle, perhaps. That's a fun detail as well. Uh, lots of height change and, and height elevation uh, as far as the overall geography of the map goes. They've uh, they've really done a lot with that, and I feel like that's also one of those things you just kind of come to expect now from head-to-head -head maps is that there's a lot of elevation change because it does make it more dynamic and does make it more interesting. Uh, but that is the map as a whole. There's a lot more details, of course, uh, to check out. So if you'd like to spend a little bit more time with this map, I'll provide a link to the park uh, download. Uh, between these two parks, uh, Lost Dilith and this one here, uh, Lost Dilith did come out victorious in the head-to-head -head match, but uh, both of the parks are pretty solid in their own right. Uh, this is a really high-quality year for sure for head-to-head. -head. Uh, but... Uh, you will need RCT or open RCT to, to view this. I'll also provide a link to that if you don't have it. Uh, but that's it for this one. We will be back with round one, match three coming up next. Till then, thank you all very much for watching and have a great day.